Okay, this is my first lab report for Physics 2211. This is Lab 1, and this regards the movement of an object with constant velocity and zero net force. So in my lab, I used a baseball to describe the movement of an object in that exposition with constant velocity. Um, in order to do that, I used Tracker to record the movement of that baseball and then to track the movement of that object. Um, on top of that, I did use GlowScript to create a computer program to simulate the movement of that baseball and how it would move if there was a true constant velocity and zero net force. And then in the end, I compared the program, the expected movement of that baseball, with Tracker, the observed movement of that baseball. So setting up Tracker, I first had to define the baseball's diameter, of which I set at 0 0.35135 meters. The video or the time frame of the ball's motion goes from frame 50 to frame 76, which is a total of 26 frames, and lasts a time of 0 0.867 seconds. And I started the origin, or I placed the origin of the graph at the center of the baseball at the beginning of my video, which was frame 50. Using GlowScript then, I took the original Physics 2211 program we were given and edited it to fit the baseball simulation. I edited the radius of the ball along with the initial velocity and the position in the while loop. I started the initial, or I got the initial velocity from finding the average velocity in the observed movement in Tracker. So I took the final position minus the initial position over the change in time, and that ended up equating to 1.213 meters per second. Um, I also assumed that the velocity was constant, so the average velocity ended up being the total constant velocity throughout the, throughout the program. Um, I also edited the position because the original position is assumed to be zero, so I started it at 0 0.004 meters. Um, on top of that, I changed the change in time to fit the time between the frames on tracker, so the time per time per run through the while loop is 0.033 seconds, and because there is a zero net constant force, friction was also assumed to be negligible. So here's the video I took from Tracker. It's a little bit fast, so I'll play it a couple more times. You can see me rolling the ball in the positive x direction with the axis. Here is a graph that compares the predicted model to the experiment observation. The predicted model in GlowScript is identified or defined as the blue line, and the true movement of the baseball is defined as the red line. So some notes on this graph. I observed that the baseball experiment followed the computer model very closely, a lot closer than I at least predicted. Um, the experimental movement of the baseball and tracker started off at a much slower speed. However, when I gave it the push that we could see in the video, it appeared to accelerate and then get back on the same path as the computer program. We can also see a little bit towards the end that the velocity is possibly tapering off and will eventually come to end to zero, but that's past, past the experiment. A couple questions that we have to talk about in this lab. The first one is that what if the axis was changed, um, specifically if the axis were flipped? If the axis were flipped, then our velocity would have the same magnitude, however it will be in a different direction. That arrow would be 180 flipped um, against itself, so the position in which the baseball travels will be negative now instead of positive the way I defined it in Tracker. If the net force of the baseball was not zero, that means that to maintain a constant velocity, it would take an infinite number of pushes and pulls that equate it to a net force of zero over a length of time. So you can have I can push it each infinitely small amount of time at whatever net force I would like as long as the next point in time it is the exact same in reverse. If there is a less than infinite point in time of which I move that ball, then the net force of zero cannot be achieved or it can be achieved however without a constant velocity. And there you go, that's my first lab report.